to learn the good, the bad, and the reality of the nomadic lifestyle, click the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Click the bell notification. So as many of you already know, Carolyn and I have decided that we are going to quit the nomadic lifestyle in the near future. Now we're thinking about four years, we're gonna start homesteading. And now there's been a lot of questions as to what does that mean? What does homesteading mean? Actually, the government suggests that back in the olden days, if you claimed a piece of land, I guess out west, and you homestead on it for a certain amount of years, I guess you could, you could have that property. What I mean is I wanna live off grid, maybe raise some chickens, solar panels, collect rainwater. There's been discussion as to whether we want to dig a well or not. If we dig a well, that means we got to have electric. Now there's a way that there's this device that you can actually buy that you can actually stick down into the well and pull water up. But the wells are so expensive. So collecting rainwater, the reason we've decided to do this is we really feel like the nomadic lifestyle is going to be so difficult to do in the near future. It's just going to be impossible. It's going to cost a fortune to do. Everything's going to paid camping. All year, since January, I have been wanting to go to the Gulf Coast near Houston, Texas. Magnolia Beach, Crystal Beach, there's a bunch of beaches down there. And so back in January, I did all kinds of research on this. And it really seemed like a great idea. You could park right on the beach. You could literally just go up the coastline so what my intention was to go down as far south as I could into Texas, maybe around Padre Island, and start working my way up north, December, January, February. And by the time it got into March, we'd be up in Louisiana, and then we could start our, venture, our summertime adventure. I decided to go ahead and do some research. We're right, at, we're near Lubbock, Texas now. And I decided to go ahead and research it again, just make sure my plan was still a good plan, that you know I hadn't missed anything. And all of a sudden, I started seeing all kinds of reviews suggesting that uh, this may be a bad idea. A lot of reviews saying the towns are, are going to start charging. They've shut down the water. They've shut down showers. Just all kinds of different things that was there that isn't there now. So the next day, I pulled up an article that said that at Magnolia Beach, they're thinking about shutting camping down there. Uh, a lot of criminal activity going on. So things are changing and it's gonna get harder and harder to find places to camp, even in Arizona and I've documented all that. So we're gonna buy a piece of property and homestead or live off grid or whatever you wanna call it. Now, a lot of people think, okay, well, the, if you're gonna homestead, you're gonna be miles away from, from people. Well, that may not be the case. I, mean, I don't wanna make this too complicated. Right now, we're in a city park, for example. Uh, I don't want my lifestyle to change from what we're doing now, except I, I want to remove the traveling part of it because there's just no place to go anymore. The hardest part of this lifestyle is finding some place to sleep. You know, we can't go to Florida. Most of everything in Florida is shut down now. We can't go to Texas. Arizona is so packed with snowbirds that Arizona is actually looking at, at uh, what they're going to do. I found out the other day, the citizens of Quartzite, Arizona, absolutely hate snowbird season. <laughs> So read an article on that the other day. We're just gonna build a, a small building. I've been looking at different buildings. I saw a building the other day made out of tin roof. It was brown, tin roof material. I thought that was kind of neat. So I'm just, you know, we're, we're just researching right now. The original thought was Mississippi for several reasons. Mississippi is a warmer climate. And the first few places that I looked, land prices were so cheap. But then when I really started looking into homesteading or off-grid living or whatever you want to call it in Mississippi, there's actually, from what I can tell so far in the research, Mississippi had to make a lot of concessions to the federal government to get FEMA funds after a hurricane. So all the buildings had to have uh, specific codes they got to adhere to, which is very complicated if you're just wanting to live in a small 24 by 24 foot box without electric or running water. Two top states that keep popping up as good homesteading states, number one is Missouri, and number two is Tennessee. Now, I'm sure somebody will say, no, Tennessee's better, but it, it doesn't matter. What I've noticed about Tennessee, though, is land prices are skyrocket high, very expensive there, and just out of our, our budget range. And then you go to Missouri, and Missouri, from what I understand, actually encourages living off-grid. So this is very exciting. Missouri is our home state. Now there is a huge downside to Missouri, huge. 
it gets cold there. So you got a short growing season if you want to garden. If you want to raise chickens or anything, you got to think about how you're going to keep the water thawed out. Now, you know, of course, we've got to still have internet because I still need to be able to work. That's, so I got to, you know, we got to be close enough to town that I can get internet uh, the same way we do now with our Verizon hotspot or cell phones or whatever. Now, as far as, you know, farming and all that stuff, you know, I, I recognize a lot of people are concerned about my aging. I'm, you know, I'm getting older and I was actually called foolish. I'm foolish for considering this because I'm so old. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I am getting a little old. I mean, and I understand what you're saying, but I'm not intending to farm. I mean, chickens is about the extent of the farming I want to do. I've raised chickens before, maybe some ducks. Duck eggs are really good. I've had ducks. I found some ducks that somebody was selling. So I bought the ducks and man, duck eggs are great, but nothing too difficult. And the thing about chickens though, is you can, you can let them uh, free range and then get a lot of their food just out of the ground. And so you don't have a lot of cost with food. The problem with free range is you're gonna lose a lot of chickens because when, when the hawks come around, they like to swoop down and kill the chickens. Uh, what I did before when I did this, I would go to livestock auctions and buy a pig. And back then, you know, what, 10 years ago, you could buy a pig for hundred bucks, butcher it, and it would be tons cheaper than going to the store and buying pork. Well, right now that's all we eat as it is, pork and chicken. Uh, you know, I don't want to make this too complicated because as I do get older, it's going to be more difficult to do. So I want to set up uh, completely off grid where I can collect rainwater, pump it into the house. All my electric will be off solar and I'll have a generator for a backup, of course. So this research is going to take some time. Maybe in the next year or two, we'll be able to buy a piece of property, start nomad lifestyle just in Missouri to get things going for us but we don't want to rush into it. We want to make sure that we understand as much as we can possibly understand through research. You know, is Missouri the best state or is Mississippi the worst state? You know, those kind of things. What's the code enforcement? You know, if we go buy a piece of property and all of a sudden they say, hey, you know, you got to have code enforcement. You got to be hurricane proof. You got to be all this. Well, then it just become unreasonably tough. In a lot of states, if, if the property already has electric pole to it, you have to buy electric. Thanks for watching. Click like if you like the video and happy travels.